Hey folks, John from Ride Upstate, and I just wanted to hit on a bunch of random little topics that I thought would be great for kind of a weekly roundup of things that have caught my attention. So the first thing, and actually I think these came out about a week ago, but I didn't get around to commenting on them. Uber put out a couple of commercials about Uber Pass. If you recall back in 2019, this was something that they were pushing. People could pay a flat rate to get X number of rides, to get certain number of rides or certain number of meals. It's basically a way for customers to pay less on their rides and their meals. Well, then we had a pandemic all of last year in 2020. Things are opening up now, so they're pushing this Uber Pass to their customers right now. And I thought I would react to those commercials. And then I want to talk about Uber continuing to require riders and passengers to wear masks. Of course, there's the issue with DoorDash going down twice in a week. That's kind of big news. There's some drama around certain personalities on YouTube. And of course, there's some other miscellaneous things I want to throw in there as well. So let's watch these advertisements for Uber Pass, and then let's talk about it a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> so, they don't really talk about the benefits except, hey, you know, save on each ride, which is a great benefit, obviously, and save on delivery fees, but they don't really get into the details of it in the commercials. So, since they don't talk about what you actually get, let's take a look at their website and uh, see what you get. So here is the Uber Pass website. It talks about the benefits. Now, again, this is for customers. This shouldn't affect us as riders and delivery drivers, but here we go. Members only riding. They get 10% off on economy rides and 15% off on premium. Zero dollar delivery fee on eligible restaurants. 5% restaurant savings. And then it says exclusive perks. You can unlock, unlock perks from restaurants near you. So it's $25 a month. And again, you're saving on rides. And here's a little fine print. Uber XXL, Uber Green, Uber Comfort rides are eligible for 10%. Only Uber Black rides are eligible for 15% ride discounts. Okay, so everything else is 10%. So what they should have said in this advertisement was save 10% on rides, save 15% on Uber Black. You know, because I would think that a lot of customers think that Excel and Comfort are premium options. So the $0 delivery fee and the 5% off only applies to eligible orders of $15 minimum and eligible grocery orders of $30 minimum, minimum. Remember, Uber is getting into the grocery delivery business just like DoorDash has, has done, plus taxes and service fees, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what does this excludes California? Where's the little number four? I don't know where it is. Do, 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 do. Become a member for just $24.99 a month. That is, it's auto billing. So here we go. So you're getting 10% off of your rides and you're getting what? 5% um, off at restaurants, right? Maybe no delivery fees if it's an eligible um, restaurant. So 10% off. Now, if you make a lot of long distance rides, you're going to get your money back Pretty, you're going to get your $24.99 back pretty quickly. If you use it on a daily basis, you'll earn back that 10% pretty quickly. 
So if you're a customer of Uber's, if you charge this to a credit card that also gives you points back, I mean, you could stand to save a decent amount of money on rides. But for the casual rider who's going to use it um, once, once a week, maybe twice a week, are you going to spend two? I mean, you have to spend two hundred and fifty dollars in rides just to break even at this point to get your to get your ten percent off, right? So, is that going to work for most people? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work for most people. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about that has come up is the whole deal of. I got a notification, I think it was this morning, that Uber is no longer requiring a mask verification for drivers. So that's that's good. I mean, it didn't work anyway, right? So uh, it's good that they're removing that extra step of having to get going in the app. Um, but they're still requiring masks for drivers and passengers even if you're vaccinated. And I can tell you right now, here in New York, all the state restrictions have been lifted. So, I mean, obviously, there's still, if you're on public transportation, I think you're still required to wear a mask. But, I mean, for the most part, people aren't wearing masks anywhere unless they're not vaccinated or they, they don't feel safe without wearing a mask. So what I, I mean, I, I think it would make sense to have in the app an option to allow the drivers and the riders to say, I'm vaccinated, I don't want to wear a mask. And let the riders and the drivers make the choice of whether or not to accept customers who aren't wearing masks, to accept customers who aren't vaccinated, and so on. I think Uber is putting in undue burden on a lot of people. Um, I'm hoping that the CDC is going to change their guidelines very soon. New York State is at hit the 70% number for right for herd immunity. That was what we were hearing about. You got to be at 70% in order to be at herd immunity when it comes to the vaccine. So we're in a different situation than a lot of other locations. I understand that in other states, the vaccination rate is a lot lower. I understand in other countries, they're still having issues with COVID. But if Uber is able to set certain features and things and make certain things available in some states and some markets and not others, this is something they should be able to do. They should be able to look and say, okay, New York is wide open. They're at 70% vaccination of the population. So there is no need for people there to wear masks. Now, I know just by observation that a lot of people are not wearing masks when they go on a ride in Uber. I wear my mask because it's, you know, someone could falsely report me or, well, they could report me for not wearing a mask if I don't. But I know personally, I have not been making a big deal if a passenger does not want to wear a mask, especially if they're sitting in the back seat. It just doesn't, at this point, I think it doesn't really makes sense. Uh, if I'm vaccinated, if they're vaccinated, to require masks in the vehicle. You know, those people are going to get out of the car and they're going to go into a bar where they don't have to wear a mask. What kind of sense does that make? It makes absolutely no sense to, to require masks. So I'm hoping that Uber is going to remove this restriction fairly soon. I'm hoping that the CDC is going to give maybe some expanded guidance and say, look, if you're in a state where the vaccination rate is so high, you don't need to wear masks on public transportation or ride share. And that's really the thing is they're, they're following the CDC guidelines. But I mean, how far are you going to take that, right? Anyway, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into an argument about masks or anything like that and vaccinations and things. I just I just would like to see more options available to people 
who are not as risk averse as some others might be. Hey, by the way, I ordered new springs for my car. Can't wait to get these put in. Car was riding a little low, so I ordered new springs and uh, gonna have a buddy help me install them. Remember, you can save a lot of money doing maintenance yourself. Something like this on a Prius is super, super easy. It's like six bolts and I can have the springs replaced. The shocks are a different story. That's gonna be a big mess uh, when those get in, but springs are in, so that's good. Uh, DoorDash, right? DoorDash, holy smokes, has, for some reason or another, been crashing the last couple of days. They're, they've been making some changes to the app. So now chat mostly happens in-app. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done any deliveries on DoorDash in a couple weeks, so, so I'm not 100% sure. Right, so they move navigation into the app. They're moving the, the chat into the app. And I think the reason they're moving the chat into the app is it's just more secure for the end user. Uh, and for the delivery drivers, the, I saw someone on Instagram mention that, oh, I can't send people memes anymore. Well, that might be part of the problem, you know. <laughs> there are some people out there who have no boundaries, and they will send you pictures of things that they shouldn't send you pictures of, and they will do it through DoorDash, or they'll do it through text, right? So I think this is a better option to have the communication inside the app. It allows you to uh, go back and see those those uh, conversations a lot easier. It allows DoorDash to track it a lot easier. It allows DoorDash to see if comments were made that shouldn't have been made a lot easier. Whatever. But DoorDash being down twice in a week, I think it's because of these new features. They've added on these features, and as they roll out these features... It causes undue stress on their systems, and the system goes down. DoorDash is growing fast. They have grown fast, and I think they're trying to make improvements and changes to the platform, but unfortunately, they're not getting tested in the way that they need to be tested first, and so that's why we're seeing these outages on the platform. For those of you who don't know, I do IT as my full-time job. I've been doing it since the 90s. So I understand how all the, this testing cycle and everything goes. And it can be pretty tough. It can be pretty tough. You think you've got a problem licked and you roll it out. And what happens is when a bunch of people start hitting it at the same time, you have issues. So hopefully that will change in the near future and the platform will stabilize. We've got another weekend coming up. So we'll see what happens. So there's been some drama on YouTube lately about the lowering of the base pay and some people who've made some videos around it. I'm not going to mention names. I don't want to get into the middle of it. If you've been around, you you know what's going on, right? You, you know the dealio. You know who's saying what. If you're watching all the different gig tubers, you know. And, I mean, there have been some interesting and, and uh, humorous rebuttals to this one person's remarks. And... You know, what What are you going to do? Listen, people have their own opinions about how they think things should be done. And it's okay for them to have a different opinion. I just realized I still have my headphones in and I don't have to have them in because I'm not listening to videos. Anyway, people are going to have their own opinions. That's the way it is. And whether you think someone is a company shill or not... Um, whether you think someone's attitude could be better, you know, I think everybody's attitude could be better. One of the most positive people I see online is Pedro DoorDash Santiago. And shoot, I bet he would say there are things about, there are times where he could be a lot more positive. I like to try and keep things as positive as possible on here. I like to address any issues that I see with the different platforms. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to accuse anyone. Look, companies are out to make money. That's what they do. CEOs, their only job, if, they, if it's a public company, their only job is to make the stock perform better. That's their job as a CEO. Okay, the board hires them. The people who own stocks, I don't know why my Google thing is going off here. The, the, the people who own, own all the stocks, who have control over the stocks, 
They want to see the stock price go up and not down. And so it's their job to make sure the stock performs the way the board expects it to perform. So when, when CEOs say certain things, when CFOs, when people who are, you know, higher up vice presidents and things like that at companies say certain things of large companies that are public, that have stock, it's par for the course, right? They're, they're not going to take a crap on their own company. And in fact, a lot of times after they leave, they're not allowed to take a crap on their own company, right? Because there are these anti-disparagement clauses that these people sign. When you're up there and you're making millions of dollars a year, you've got a lot of restrictions on what you can say and what you can do as a CEO. So, I mean, that's just the way it goes. When you're president, when you're CEO of these big companies, your job is to make the stockholders more money. That's your job, period. Everyone else below, like once you get down into middle management, it's their job to make sure the company runs well. But at the top, it's all about image and how you're going to communicate uh, the values and the virtues of your company. That's just the way it is. And so, you know, if you see an interview with someone from a particular company, whether it's DoorDash or Uber or whatever, expect them to respond in a way that favors the company. It's always going to favor the company. It's just the way it is, right? Hey, this has been fun um, talking about a few news items and a few YouTube items. Is this something you want to see me do more? Hey, hit that like button. And uh, if so, I'd appreciate it. And if this video earned a subscription, I would appreciate it. Until next time, my name is John from Ride Upstate, reminding you that just because you're in a small market doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.